Civil aircraft are those used for any non-military purpose, including commercial uses like flying passengers or cargo on scheduled flights and private or recreational uses. In this chapter, we'll explore the different types of aircraft produced, the product segments. The largest segment and the focus of this primer is fixed-wing aircraft, aka planes. Helicopters, called rotary aircraft, and lighter-than-air devices, like balloons, make up much smaller segments, together less than 10% of the total civil aircraft market. Before we launch into the differences that define the various fixed-wing subsegments, let's say a word or two about what makes planes planes. All fixed-wing aircraft have a few key common component systems, the airframe, the engines, the avionics, and the interiors. The airframe is the structure of the aircraft, and it includes the wings, the fuselage, the body of the plane, the landing gear, and all of the so-called control surfaces. These are the elements that the pilot can use to control the plane, like flaps for lifting the nose up and down, or ailerons for tilting the plane when turning. Airframes must perform under tremendous stress while remaining as light as possible. Some of the most cutting-edge materials, like aluminum alloys and carbon fiber composites, are often used. This is particularly true for the wings. Wings need to be thin enough to efficiently create lift and strong enough to support the aircraft, which weighs hundreds of tons, through all flight conditions. The companies that make the airframe are called airframe manufacturers, airframers, or airframe OEMs, standing for Original Equipment Manufacturer. There are three principal manufacturers of large commercial aircraft, Airbus, Boeing, and Amber Air. These three alone have 90% market share. Airframers are like the conductors of the whole orchestra. They make key parts of the airframe and then assemble the rest of the aircraft from component systems. One of these systems is the engine, which generates thrust. There are two principal types of engines propellers, which spin and move air backward to drive the plane forward, and jet engines, which draw air in, compress it with fuel, and ignite the mixture to create a blast. There are also turboprop engines, which combine the two. Turboprops are highly fuel efficient, especially at the lower speeds used for regional flights. Engines are massive engineering feats in their own right, and are produced by a separate set of players like Rolls-Royce and General Electric, or GE, Aerospace. Another set of key components are the various avionics, control and navigation systems. These can range from simple sensors to advanced autopilot software. Airframers may develop their own avionics, or use solutions developed by avionics providers like Honeywell Airspace. GE plays here as well. Last, there are the interiors, seats, in-flight technology, and cargo bays. Let's turn now to the differences, the types of fixed-wing aircraft. The largest segment, and our focus, is commercial-sized aircraft. These are flown by airlines and are called airliners accordingly. Airliners can carry passengers, cargo, or both. But actually, the planes themselves are largely the same in any case, only the interiors will vary. Airliners are therefore better segmented not by what they carry, but what needs they fulfill. This is called the mission profile, and is a function of the range, required distance, and load capacity, carrying weight limit. The longest range missions, exceeding 8,000 nautical miles, roughly the distance from New York to Singapore, and the highest load requirements, up to 500 passengers, are generally served by the biggest planes in the world, wide-body aircraft. The Boeing 777 and 747 and Airbus's A380 are all examples. As a heuristic, if there are two passenger aisles in the main cabin, it's a wide-body plane. Historically, wide-body aircraft used three or four engines, called trijets or quadjets. However, advances in engine technology and efficiency now allow twin jets, such as the A350 or B777, to perform the same missions with less fuel. The next airliner segment is the narrow-body aircraft, like the Boeing 737 and the A320. These carry a smaller load, more like 100 to 240 passengers, and fly shorter missions, closer to about 4,000 nautical miles max. 
Airlines, the buyers of these products, often prefer these narrow-body aircraft. They are more fuel-efficient and are easier to fill to capacity. Running more, shorter routes has been a winning strategy for airlines like Southwest, which exclusively flies the 737. The final segment is regional aircraft, like the Bombardier-8 and the Embraer ERJ-190. These planes have the shortest ranges, around 2,000-plus nautical miles, and the smallest load factors, 30 to 100 passengers. There are smaller segments as well, served by smaller planes. For example, private or recreational aircraft. These are made by companies like Cessna, Gulfstream, and Beechcraft. There is also a wide variety of specialty aircraft that addresses specific needs like agricultural spraying or firefighting. Of course, even the smallest of these planes are tremendously complex products. In the next chapter, we'll explore the value chain that makes all of this possible.